worldwide recognition of Turkey's crimes, but also reparations and restitutions. Since this dark tragedy in history, Turkey's policy of inhumanity is as stark and clear ever. Today, we'll be diving deep into both issues with activists who have been at the forefront of educating our people about our rightful claims to our homeland, historic homeland, and shedding light on Turkey's continued human rights abuses. With the recent events going on in Turkey, we have decided to split this panel into two portions. First panel will cover the topic, Turkey and the Armenian Genocide, Consequences and Resolution, followed by with the most recent events taking place in northern Syria between the Kurds and the Turks, Turkey's invasion of Syria, legal impact and ramifications. Both these panels will dissect and analyze the many topics surrounding Turkey and the current state of Western Armenia. The wide range of issues includes legal arguments regarding reparations, the, the Treaty of Sirs, hidden Armenians in Western Armenia, and the massive consequences of the Armenian Genocide. We are proud to have Dr. Khachik Muradian, Ani Hovanesian, Dr. Hernar Wanpa, and Edvin Minasian with us here today to help provide their perspective on this panel. I'd like to first introduce our first panel, our first half, Turkey and the Armenian Genocide, Consequences and Resolution. From Spares Hospital operating rooms in Siberia to backstage green rooms at the Grammys, Ani Hovanesian has produced and directed hundreds of inspiring true stories for television and other international audiences and has just completed her first documentary, The Hidden Map. The film weaves the multi-lensed and layered story and discovers discoveries of an Armenian-American traveling through Turkey in search, in search of a home and a Scotsman consumed with documenting the vast landscape of ruins before, this, before they disappear forever. Its West Coast premiere will take place at the 2019 ARPA Film Festival in Hollywood uh, November 8th to the 10th, Ani Hovanesian graduate, graduated summa cum laude and, and Phi Beta Kappa from UCLA with a BA in Mass Communications and from USC with an MA in Broadcast Journalism. Ani and husband Armenio have two children, Sophine and Daron, named after the native Armenian lands of their great-grandfathers. Dr. Herna Wanpa is a professor of art history at the University of California, Davis. She is the author of the New York Times recommended The Modern Life of a Medieval Manuscript from Genocide to Justice and the award-winning The Image of an Ottoman City Architecture in Aleppo. Her writing has also appeared in the Huffington Post and the Los Angeles Times. Our second panel, uh, Turkey's Invasion of Syria, Impact and Ramifications. Edwin Menasian was born and raised in Istanbul. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in Finance from the University of Southern California in 1987 and Juris Doc degree from Loyola Law School in 1990. A two-term chairman of the Armenian Bar Association, he has been serving as the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Organization of Istanbul Armenians continuously since 2010 and is a member of the Board of Directors of DC-based Armenian Legal Center for Justice and Human Rights. Mr. Minasian is a frequent columnist for Agos Harantink's newspaper focusing mainly in the areas of confluence between Armenian cause-related issues and the United States foreign policy. Dr. Khachik Muradian is a lecturer in Middle East Middle Eastern, South Asian, and African Studies at Columbia University, where he, has also, where he also heads the Armenian Studies program. Muradian's first book, The Armenian Genocide and the Resistance in Ottoman Syria during the World War I, is forthcoming. Muradian is also the author of articles on genocide, mass violence, unarmed resistance, and approaches to teaching history. The co-editor of a forthcoming book, on late Ottoman history and the editor of the peer-reviewed journal, The Armenian Review. Previously, Muradian has taught courses on imperialism, mass violence, concentration camps, urban space, and conflict in the Middle East. The aftermaths of war and mass violence and human rights at Worcester State University, 
Clark University, Stockton University, Rutgers University, and California State University, Fresno. That being said, I'd like to introduce our first panel, Aniho Vanessian and Dr. Hernar Wanpa. Howdy, Luis. I'm very happy to see you here on this early, not so early, but Saturday morning. And your presence here, our presence here, indicates that the soul and the stories and the resolve and the purpose that our grandparents and our parents poured into us is driving us forward. They gave us the window to our past they gave us the roadmap to our future. And it's with that roadmap that more than seven years ago, I ventured to our ancestral lands with my father, Richard Hovanesian, and with a group of journeyers led by Armen Aroyan. As difficult as it was to go there, I had to do it. I had to come face to face with the truth, with the horror of it, the hell of it, and the miracle of it. And only by being there and touching that soil and meeting those people and looking in the eyes of those who destroyed us and who, those who are our descendants, who are victims and survivors themselves, only by being there could I really begin to understand what we had, what we lost, and what remains. And as difficult as it was, as infuriating as it was to look in the eyes of millions of people, these people whom I would look at and say, your ancestor, your grandfather murdered mine. As difficult as it was to see the ruins of monasteries and churches strewn all over our homeland, intentionally destroyed then, intentionally destroyed now by the government, by treasure hunters, people who think that when they see something Armenian or when they see a cross that, that there is gold hidden underneath, so they go digging. To go to the city of Ani, and to have to pay admission to get in, only to see that the word Armenian is not mentioned once. To go to the villages of my grandparents and look for Zitor and Bazmashen and Kesrig, and to see that Bazmashen is today Sari Chubuk, and to know that all of your grandparents' villages and parents' villages have been renamed and wiped off the map to see the remains of Armenian cemeteries completely desecrated, strewn about, broken in half, and a lone Anushavan, 1895, in Mush, lying there. Who was he? What happened to him? What happened to his family? Despite all that, what I want to focus today on is what, rather, who remains there. Because that is our hope. They are our living link. No matter how much has been destroyed, there are still physical, material traces of our magnificent civilization, monuments that are evidence of the genocide, and people living there with our blood running through them, who are brave enough today to say, I am Armenian. Now, what I'd like to do is show more than speak. I'm going to show four clips today. The first two are about Armenians that maybe most of us don't know about. We'll talk about the so-called hidden, perhaps not so hidden Armenians afterwards. But first I want to share with you a very brief clip about Vakaf, the only remaining Armenian village in all of Turkey. Musaled, 
You've all heard of 40 days of Musadagh. And this is an Armenian village that remains today, Armenians in Turkey. Then we're going to venture up into the mountains overlooking the Black Sea to meet the Hamshans. These are people who escaped the persecution far before the genocide and created their Hamshan identity living up in the mountains of Hamshan. So let's watch these two brief clips, bearing in mind that we will be, meet more Armenians later, and that these are the people who still remain, and that somehow we need to embrace and uh, make part of our lives. Ramitsek. We're going to go uh, this morning to Musadah, Musalep, where the Armenians, instead of allowing themselves to be taken uh, to slaughter and death, decided it'd be better to fight and die uh, rather than to go along with the deportation orders. Musa means Moses and Dah means mountain. So it's very biblical, Moses is mountain. Uh, and they went up to the mountain uh, where they resisted uh, the uh, attacks and uh, uh, siege for more than 40 days. Uh, Musadal had six villages. The fifth one is the only Christian village left in Turkey. It's a small village known as Vakaf uh, that has a church. Uh, these are people who did not leave in the 1939 period when everyone else um, gave up their homes. It's the end of June 2013, and 25 of us are with Armin Aroyan and with Papa Richard Hobanisian. We've trekked through historic Armenia and now have gone northward to the Black Sea, where we're going up into the mountains in search of the Hamshan. <laughs> Oh, Muti. 
72 72 همشتی است همشتی های است همشتی باش همشتی همشتی ات باز همشتی این ای همشیلی آیا اوراقم بول زانو تاتا اوراقم بول دسات زی اینا دون نیم دون نه بارند اوره ادی کدوم ده ای نیم دون Իմ էշի սետ է գաբրին, սատ է էշ ոսիմ, էշ, էշի լեն, էշի լեն ինչ է, բեշ, մարտովնա, մարտովը, զատ է մարտովնա, մարտու հետ, պաս է իրենց տունը, շուն է ինչի կտա չի կաշա, շուն է, շուն, շուն է, անոն ունի, անոն ունի, կուստի դու կուստի, կուստի դու կուստի, Bye bye, Asu Pari. Manak Paro. Those are glimpses from just one or two hour visits to these places. Now, uh, when I was there a few years back, I was in an old home in Kayseri, a beautiful Armenian historic home, and I saw a non Armenian man, clearly non Armenian, taking pictures. And I said, who are you? I always had my camera in hand. I always have my camera in hand because I think it's critical that we document what remains. Here, who we have, our parents, our grandparents, if they're still alive, doc pick up your iPhones, pick up your phones, take anything you have and document those stories before it's too late. So whenever I'm traveling, wherever it is, and especially in our ancestral lands, I have my camera in hand, as I did at this moment, when I met a Scottish explorer. And this man, it turns out, as I questioned him, has been uncovering and documenting the vanishing traces of our homeland for 30 years. He went as a student 30 years ago to do some medieval summer documenting project, and he stumbled upon our ruins, our civil lost civilization, and he has made it his life's mission to document what remains. He is, I think, he loves and cares for our relics and our ruins, maybe in a way that none of us has or can, because he has touched it in a way that we haven't. He also says, you know, Armenians always want their lands back, but whoever comes to see what's left? Who comes to see their ruins? Who comes to see these churches and these monasteries and come up with a real plan for them? So as much as he loves our history and our past and our people and our relics especially, he wants us to become more um, involved with their presence and with their preservation. Now, uh, I convinced this kind of loner of a explorer to let me follow him. His love affair is with the buildings, and I was very interested in him and documenting him, and of course, I gravitated to the people. I have just finished my first feature documentary. It's called The Hidden Map, and it's going to, um, as, as was said, it's going to be showing at the ARPA Fest Festival for the first time ever on November 9th. And um, today I'm going to share a brief trailer that takes you into that world. And then I want to finish just talking about the Armenians, the hidden Armenians who are not so hidden um, in Dikran Agerdmush and throughout historic Western Armenia. So this is uh, the hidden map. The more I look, the more bones I see. Earth is a huge structure like this doing here in the middle of nowhere. I was warned against coming and warned to not be interested in Armenian things because the Armenian past of Turkey was a forbidden past. 7,000 miles away in Los Angeles, I an American Armenian was living cut off from the physical touch of my roots. 
which would give an idea of Italian and put up in Argentina. My grandparents' voices and a lifetime of longing drove me across the world to find my beginnings. That's when I met this Scottish explorer. What's your name? Stephen. 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 Now, we're off to uncover places not found on modern maps, civilizations that have vanished from the face of the earth. I'm looking for Ermeni. No Ermeni. No Ermeni, buradan gitti, göç etti. Forbidden, sir. Don't photo. Ah, there goes. If something maliciously demolished an historic building in Britain, they would be prosecuted. Where did the Armenians go? I don't know. You know better than me. There could be no justification for what was done in these lands. Probably nowhere else has already so much been destroyed. I'm here to give those monuments a voice. We have lost past. Bubalar Ermeni Bavir. Tarihle artık yüzleşmeliyiz. Follow the clues. Look beneath the surface and you'll begin to see the hidden map. The lady that you saw at saw at the very end uh, is from Dikranagerd and when I was in Dikranagerd, as I was in Mush, I, over the years, came across many people who had lived their lives um, as Kurds, as Turks. Their grandparents were taken in during the genocide for benevolent or malevolent uh, reasons. They were raised as Kurds and as Turks and uh, as Muslims. And in the last couple decades have come to terms with and have learned as their parents or grandparents are dying and they're saying and they're discovering the, the secrets to their identity. There has been this surge of courage in people to look for their identity, to connect to their identity. In Mush, I met Hayratin, who grew up as a Kurd, but who in the last decade or so changed himself to Serot Pasha, and who learned everything about the Armenians, and who took me to everywhere in Mush, to Arakelot's Bank, and to Surp Karabed, and to the, 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 the hidden Armenians. He, went to, he called me from Yerevan a few years ago because that's how much he cared. He wanted to reconnect with his roots. I heard that he just passed away last year. Um, then in Dikranagerd, there was this lady, and there are many others who just come out of the woodwork, and they want to connect to us. They realize that they are Armenian, and as difficult and as dangerous it is to, become, to be Armenian in Turkey, some of them, and I would say, some people would venture to say there are more than a million, maybe two million, people with Armenian rud blood running through them. So... Um, now is a very difficult time in Turkey, as you know, with what is happening right now. But also in the last five years or so, there has been quite a um, clamping down on these people. And it takes everything in them to keep their courage and their connection alive. They are our living connection on that land. And we have to embrace them that way. We have to realize that they're our living link on that land and that we have to collaborate. We have to show them that they matter to us. We have to have programs, maybe sending them to Armenia, maybe here, maybe talking to them so that we could figure out how they can preserve and cultivate um, and protect our living heritage on that land. So this last segment, I'm going to ask that we not live stream, that we cut the video because um, there are, a few, there are someone in here who wouldn't want to be seen online. Her parents wouldn't want her to be seen. This is just a girl I met in 